everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Warm Wishes. Um, this is going to be a 10.5 by 8.5 by 2.5 inch album. It'll have four pocket pages. Um, and I'm actually going to do the cover first, which I don't usually, um, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't uh, accidentally repurpose some of my pages. So for the cover, I'm going to do something different. On my larger albums, I almost always use 12 by 12 paper to decorate but in this case I'm going to use a double matted 8 by 8 so why is it double matted it's because this is eight and a half so I've chose this plaid the red and then this 8 by 8 that's going to go right here on the on the black okay and I'm looking right now to see if I need to trim it down just a tiny bit. Get that out of our field of vision. So I'm going to check my measurements. This is it's not quite square. This is oops. Got off a 32nd. Oh, actually, it is. I take it back. I wasn't holding it straight. So and now let's measure the black one. Put it in my trimmer here and see what it looks like. And it should be eight in it. Eight and one eight by eight and one eight. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start by matting these two, and I may just go. Pattern, black, red, and then set it on the black. I'm going to see how this looks first. Not quite sure. There we go. I've inked the edges, as usual. Get all my notes out of the way. We've had the most unusual weather in the last couple of weeks. Very humid. Okay, now I know I want the red. I should probably, oh, I forgot I had tape on here. Check and make sure I've got a nice good square on this. This is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I'm going with a 16th inch border. I did that wrong. I'm supposed to put glue on this side. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to let that dry. It will eventually get glued down, but not at the moment. I should be putting it down like this. Oh. Yes. So, so let me talk about this print for a minute and the color combination of yellow and red. Um, when you look at this, the, the flowers look quite red, right? When you look at this, it looks pretty orange. And that's because when you put red next to yellow it pulls the orange out of the red so in my opinion this was not a good choice by graphic this should have been red and cream or red and green 
but they didn't ask me. <laughs> so you won't see me using this except maybe one of these broad red stripes. Any of the stripes that have both yellow and red on, to me, they just look too orange. And, you know, when you, like I said, when you set it next to this red, it doesn't read as red at all. Okay, it's, I'm just stalling because I need that to dry for us. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'll just have to clean my table when I'm done messing around. Okay, put some blue on the back of this. I had to mess it up because I just cleaned the table before I started the video. <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Okay, again, we were looking for a 16th inch border. All the way around. Now, I have a, this metal scraper. It's what I use for cleaning off, even when uh, it dries on. You just add a little something to soften it, and it scrapes right off. It's a lot easier than, to me, it's a lot easier than uh, trying to get it moist enough to lift it. Okay, so we have a decision to make. I'm going to put something under here to hold our cover up from dropping. So we can do this, red, black, and you know what? I like that. I like it a lot. So I'm not going to add a third layer. So this is what we're going to go with. I am going to wrap the spine. And I had just clipped it on here just to get a feel for the color or make sure I liked it. To me, this would have been a perfect place to have a candy cane stripe, but it didn't come with one that's red. The stripe is green and yellow, which doesn't remind me of a candy cane at all. Again, nobody asked me. <laughs> Actually, that's the stripe, but again, I'm not gonna use it. Why? Because of the yellow and it looks orange. Now I added this extra piece of tape here and that's because I know I'm going to color block right there. So this is another one where I have not wrapped it completely in cardstock, but I used the um, signature black construction tape. Got a little bit of glare in here this afternoon. Burnish this all into place. Hello, Nala. Nala says, hey, everyone. Again, this is from the 8x8 collection pack. I have to put myself up a sticky note to remind myself to edit out the... Um, the air conditioner. I was going to say the vacuum cleaner. My brain is not working. So right now I'm just lining it up and I'm going to trim it down to fit with the red paper. Leaving. I'm going to have to think about this for a second too. Now originally I was going to add one more layer with this plaid. So we could, that's the option is to do the wrap in plaid. Or the green. So if I use the green, here's where I was going with it. The green, it's too big. I need my small, my smaller jar of lotion. <laughs> I was going to use the green and then I was going to add the Warm Wishes Fussy Cut from the 12 by 12. And then I was going to fussy cut this off and use it as a strip, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. This was going to be added, just the flowers. So now I'm not sure. I, need, I guess I, I think I'm really liking this though. What do you guys think? It does look like a bind, like bind paper. I think that's what I'll do. So let's turn this to fit with the red paper, and then it'll go around 
front to back, and then we'll do probably do something red on the back. That needs a little bit of glue. There we go. trimming a little off both sides because I want I didn't want um, a light color on the bottom so I want to trim the rest off the top. One more test. Looks perfect. Okay, so we're going to put a nice gap here and I'm going to make it a little bigger than usual just because the border is bigger than usual. So we have the same consistent outline around the, the designer paper here as we would here. Maybe even a smidge more. Okay, now I'm going to use my hands to just sort of create the first crease so that it'll start to lay down. Let me get this green paper out of the way. I'm not going to crease it hard, just rolling it over, training it a little bit. I'm going to use my clips to hold it in place. that. Okay, that's pretty good. Now as we come around to the back and we're actually gluing all this, taping all this down, it's going to start shifting this way. So I gave myself a little extra room to play with. And these are soft creases, not, not firm creases. Okay, so the, what's important about all that is now that you've got a pretty good shape, you kind of know where your tape is going to land. So you know where the um, the potential buckle or peel points are. So the next thing I'm going to do is ink this all the way around. I'm using my go-to mahogany from Powder Puff. Stock up now. We went to do our reorder and they were out of a lot of colors. So if you like some of their standard base colors, stock up now. Maybe a while before they get uh, any more inventory. The way it worked last time is they ran out of some of our core colors and they didn't replace them. They just sort of let everything else get low and then ordered everything. So on the colors like uh, mahogany, some of the dark, dark grays and some of the, the um, paler browns that you use for distressing were out longer because they run down sooner. They're just more common. Okay, so now we're going to add our tape. Um, and we're going to tape the whole thing. And we're going to 
use strips of tape. So I've tried using an entire sheet before and I did not have success. Part of the reason that you want to use the strips of tape is it allows the paper to have some movement between each of the strips. If there's adhesive on the whole thing and no space in between, um, it, it can't move at all. So if you are going to use an entire sheet, what I would recommend, and it wouldn't be an easy thing to do, is to go through and score the entire sheet. Um, and I would do that before you take the backing off but that makes it hard to know whether or not you've gone deep enough. So it's just, it's an alternative method. It's not one I would recommend. I wouldn't feel confident that I might cut through my paper. So I'm gonna start by laying down, I'm gonna straighten this out real quick. I don't like a, a blunt end. I'm gonna lay down um, the thickest ones, which is, this is 5 8 across the middle, and then I'm gonna start getting thinner as I come up over this curve. So the curve is where you want to allow for the most movement. This is, uh, without a doubt, the area of your book that gets the most wear and tear. Sorry, I had to check make sure I was recording. Um, because every time you open and close the book, um, you are you know, moving this paper in particular. Okay, I'm actually gonna start splitting right here. I was just rubbing to see right, you know, how wide that was. So now I'm gonna start using my 3 8 inch. And some people would alternate between 3 8 and 5 8 3 8 and 5 8 but I'm just gonna go. It's the same difference. It takes a little longer this way. Um, the last few on the outside will probably, or at least one on the outside will be 5 8 I have to tell you how wide this is. I think I forgot. Okay, and I'm going to fill that gap with three eighths. So this is, is that right? So it's eight and a quarter tall, and it's eight and three eighths wide. That's a weird number. I don't know how I came up with that, but that's what I have. It doesn't have to be. You just need to make sure it's going to wrap all the way around. And I recommend the overlap on the front be at least an inch and a half and in this case it's longer because remember we're using the eight by eight designer paper so it had to stretch a little bit more so this is a couple of inches uh, my wrap is going to be this is about two and a quarter on the front <clears throat> i think yeah that's what it looks like and then a little bit bigger on the back but if you wanted you could do two and a quarter on the front, two and a half on the front, wrap it around and just use a whole 12 inch piece of paper and then fill in the gap with, you know, a coordinating piece of paper. It actually, it, I think it would be just a little bit shy. Because you have two and a half quarter on the front, two and a half on the spine. Yeah, you'd wind up short. 12 inches wouldn't cover the whole thing. But I like splitting it when it's um, 10 and a half because that's a lot of one design. I like to do usually two patterns across the back and then embellish sort of the split between the two designs with something, a sticker or a um, die cut, something like that. So now the next thing we're going to do, um, as we, we're going to test it on the spine again, and we're going to get a feel for where this is going to lay across the spine. So focus a little bit more on the spine, a little less on the front. And I need to, I'm being very sloppy. For some reason, my hands aren't working. And that's been going on for weeks now. 
I don't know if it's the heat that's making my arthritis worse or just another year, but I can definitely tell the difference. So now I've got a little bit of hangover here, so I'm going to trim that off. Bring the cover back in. Okay, so it's going to go just about so. That looks about right. So we're looking to line it up with these the two edges of the red here. And because I'm using the um, construction tape and not cardstock, it will lay pretty flat. Me. Now you don't want to put it on this way. I'm just testing it and seeing if I got my score look. If my score lines or fold lines are anywhere close to where they need to be, and yes, it looks like they are. So here's my bump and there's my score. And also just looking across to see if it's going to go in uh, pretty straight. It looks it looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one strip in the middle here. Just one. We're going to stand the album up. I'm going to stand up because I need to. Now I want to center it up and down and I want it to be based on this line, right? So we want this line to come up and around. And this is not an easy thing to do. It's a little fussy. Don't do it if you're tired. Just set it aside and come back to it. Now I'm going to pull it around just sort of with one finger and tack it down. Okay. And now I'm going to nudge it a little. Okay. Now because I've only got one strip revealed, it's going to be easy for me to nudge it. And I think it needs to be about right there. But we're going to find out in just a second. Okay. Now see as you go to close the book how much wider the gap got. It means I need to go back and reposition it further over. Pretty easy to do with only one strip of tape. How are we looking? I think that looks pretty close to this edge. What do you guys think? I think it does. Okay, so I'm going to leave that down. Look at the rest. Looks like it's good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take off some more tape on this side. And what I want to focus on is getting from the ed one edge to the other down, not across the front of the back, just this center section. So now I'm going to take one off this side. Okay. So far, so good. to start dealing with coming around the corner. 
Okay, now as we start to take the tape off and come around the corners, it's important that the book not be fully closed or fully opened. We want it to be, if this is fully closed and these are fully opened, we want this to be in about 45 degree angle. If you do it fully open, when you go to close it, it's going to tear. And if you do it fully closed and you open it, it's going to buckle. So you want to be right in the middle, which is about right there. Okay. And this is the tricky part because you're taking tape off, you're pressing, and you're also trying to hold the cover at a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> There we go. Now I just realized I want to do something else before I get the rest of this down. So I want to put a piece of black construction tape right there. So that when I color block, there's some black behind it. There we go. Now I think we can just lay the rest of them down without having to fight our 45 degree angle. Ouch, caught my own finger. There's our cover. Yay! Let's do a little housekeeping and then we're gonna do some embellishing. And then I'm gonna take a break because it's hot in my craft room, even though the air is running. Okay. Okay, now I mentioned before that I had fussy cut some items 
from the 12 by 12. And you could use the 12 by 12. I started in that direction. I started doing all these cuttings where you'd have to wind up pulling the frame in. It got so complicated, I abandoned the idea. This came off the 12 by 12 um, cover. So I definitely want to use that. And then this also came from the 12 by 12 cover. And I like that it's just larger. It looks better. And then these are elements that I cut away from... Uh, the frame in various places, and I'm, I'm planning on using some of these. This is the bird. I haven't decided if I'm going to use it. If we use the bird, we're, I probably want to drop him down so I don't cover up Mary and Bright. And then I also fussy cut the four stamp, uh, the three stamps uh, from the cover, and I was thinking about um, using. No, I don't want that because that's a bird and a bird these here I haven't decided I do like this up here this may get repurposed someplace else I was thinking I had some more oh yeah there's a little something so this was fussy cut from the frame and I was thinking about putting it here because it just looks a little too naked over here so I was thinking about adding this and then probably something else down here uh, something of the white nature, not this, because it's got too straight of an edge. But maybe if I cut this off, and we just go with the white flower and drop the leaves. These decisions tend to happen fairly organically as I go. So we could cover up the small bird and add this here, but it looks a little out of, out of balance. That would work. So I'm going to fuss around with it before I make some decisions and I am definitely going to do warm wishes here and I think I want to push it up so that it sort of comes up in, into the frame a little bit that just looks a little too too pre-planned um, and this will also by pushing it into the frame it'll also help um, demonstrate or help show that this is dimensional. And I do, I am going to use this. I just haven't decided what I'm going to do with those edges. Um, one of the things I was thinking about doing is putting a red bow here. That would cover up sort of the fact that this doesn't blend beautifully. Um, and then we have this. This would be, this would be a fun little, addition. So if you're <clears throat> uncomfortable fussy cutting, the key to, decent fussy cutting, and I say decent, not great, is just try to avoid straight lines. The more wavy it is, the more it hides any of your mistakes. See, even that looks a little too straight, so I'm not sure I can use it. Okay more work to be done. Maybe. Nope. I don't like this. I think the flower's too big. We'll find a place to use it on the inside. All right. Well, that's all I have for now. I'm going to mess around with this a little bit more and try to come up with something I like better. I'm also going to go through my chipboard and die cuts and see if there's something that jumps out at me. Um, I always like the stacked stamps, but since we already have stamps here, I don't think I want to have stamps here and here. So I'll think about it some, and I'll get Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. I'm back, and I've got um, the papers picked out for the back. Um, we are going to reintroduce the pattern from 
the spine. And then this is uh, patterns and solids. That's going to go right here. And this is one of the stickers that comes on the sticker sheet as part of the 12 by 12 collection pack. Okay, I just kind of put, uh, put everything in place to hold it until I was ready to film. Now we're ready to go. So as usual, I'm going to put this on first and then we're going to trim down the centerpiece um, to fit. So I think we're ready to go. Got a little bit of uh, a hoarse voice again. I tell you, I can't seem to shake whatever this is. I already seen a couple of specialists so far nothing alarming just annoying <laughs> so thanks for all the wonderful comments um especially um the well wishers thank you so much um i'm fine it's just a like i said there's nothing there doesn't seem to be anything serious going on just it's very annoying and I don't know if you've ever done any recording, but it's hard to listen to your own voice, even when it's at its best. <laughs> when you're sick, it's really hard to listen to your own voice. Okay, so that is in. And now we'll go ahead and trim this down to fit. I really like the way the back came together. I think when you have uh, the 10 and a half by eight and a half format, it really helps to break things up on the back. So now I'm going to mark this and trim it down to fit but I'm not going to mark it with my hook tool because that just won't work. And also I need to introduce a black strip here, which I should have put down first, but I'm just going to butt it right up against this. A black strip of tape. It could be a black strip of cardstock too, if you wish. Not a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put my black strip down. And then uh, when I can see the black behind it, I think I'll, I'll uh, do a better job of marking it. <clears throat> I hope everybody's doing well. And I can't believe July has almost come and gone. Where does time go? Okay. I'm going to cut it off the roll. It's a little easier for me. Maybe that should do it. The tape stretches a little bit when you pull it off the roll, so I want to make sure it's completely closing my gap here. Amazing how fast I put tape in, tape in my fingernails. The nice thing is there's a little bubble there. You just push it right out. It's just awesome. I still, I think there's a lot of wonderful things about this tape. There's still some things I like about wrapping. Um, it just makes the book feel, have a stronger structure, the feeling in your hand. I don't think it makes it more, um, more or less strong in terms of holding up over time, but it has a lot more body to its shape, I guess is a better way to explain it. So it doesn't sort of flop around on you. So it's really kind of, um, I, I think it really comes down to preference. Um, one of the gals that's going to do some uh, design work for us, Carla Sweet, who's getting her recording space set up right now, uh, continues to wrap hers um, because she, that's her preference. Um, she's tried both. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I'm having a hard time with my eyeballs this morning. It's probably my glasses are dirty. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my eyes. I just need to wash my glasses. <clears throat> Let's see how we do. I want to be very careful because I don't want to over trim this piece. So I may go through the process a couple times so that I don't over trim. It looks like I need 
a little more and it looks like I need to cut it at a slight angle. So that, that was right. Okay. And that just means that um, either the edge of this wasn't square and I laid my paper down square or this is not square, one or two. But this is the way to make it appear um, as a 90 degree angle. just by having even spaces all the way around your designer card stock or your designer paper. So it looks like I need to take another sliver off this end. See, I've got a little gap here and nothing up here. There we go. Okay, let's see how we did my last trip. Oh yeah, looks like it's coming together. See, doesn't that look even now? So when I put it in my trimmer, my trimmer is really too heavy to move. It's a roto trim. People ask me about that a lot. This is what I bought as my replacement to my cutter pillar, which I loved for 10 years and it just finally stopped cutting straight for me. And also the paper would bend around the blade and, um, my cutter pillar was first generation, so they didn't have spare parts. So I invested in, I, yeah, the cutter pillar was over 10 years old. I invested in a roto trim, which I love. Um, it's a roto trim 12, and it's more expensive than a, the cutter pillar, but honestly, it, it's not like the difference between a $100 trimmer and a $300 trimmer. Um, so I think it's worth, it's well worth every penny, especially if you can find it on sale. I love it. I found it on Amazon. So there you go. It's very heavy. So it's absolutely out of the question to take to a retreat. So I went ahead and held on to my caterpillar thinking that I, I would use that um, in my retreats and whatnot. But it does need like a tune up. So I had it on my list of things to do to give them a call just to see if they have any spare parts laying around from a million years ago because they're certainly not for sale. Okay, that's enough of that. The glue came out faster than I thought and slapped me in the face. <laughs> uh, I can't remember if there's words on this one. There are not. Mm -mm. Um, I think it goes this way. There's a little pattern in the back. And it's hard to tell, but I think this is the upside. It's very faint, so it, I don't think anybody but you would know. Okay. I chose to do a larger format for this, even though I just did a 7.5 by 9.5, because it's a Christmas album, and we, we tend to take more pictures at that event than anything else. So I wanted it to be a larger format so you have more room to store those precious memories. Isn't that pretty? And we're not done yet. So it looks like this is a frame that came out of the die. I know it is. It came out of the die cut. And I think it's one of the pieces that you just throw away, but I like it. So I'm going to use it here. And then I also have these fussy cut poinsettias that I think I'm going to do. Um, juxtaposed from each other here and then the last thing I was thinking of doing um, was adding one of these tags or a set of tags down at the bottom I haven't really decided and then I also have these two uh, die cuts which I thought were really cute so one of the things that I thought about doing was just using I like the red here um, a tag with a couple of pieces of this holly around it and then just layering it slightly over top this square and I think it gives the back of the book a lot of zing. Now something to consider here um, especially if you're thinking of gifting it but even if you're not um, you can consider putting your own cutout there with um, 
the location and year of the photos that are in the book or a handmade um, a piece of paper right there so, uh, framed by these two pieces of holly. So there you go. Um, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is glue the holly down and I'm going to tuck the tag in behind the stems so that if somebody buys this and wants to gift it, they can put um, a little more personal message right there with the location and date or, you know, or from... Oh, you know what I gotta do? I gotta make sure it's right side up. It is not. Now it is. This one doesn't matter because the flower's not directional, but the words would be. And I want most everything on the back to be flat so that when you open up the book, it's not sitting in a V. There's going to be a little uh, dimension on the front, but not much. I plan to have some pretty... I plan that most of the pages are going to be pretty full, um, which means you're going to have the effect of some, some of the pages sitting in a slight V anyway. So I just don't want to compound that with bulk on the outside covers. I'm going to need a little more glue here. I do. Here and here. Nala says, good morning, everyone. I think I'll put the larger one here and the smaller one here. Like so. Of course, that's backwards. I gotta get my lift back in here. I need to get a block that's exactly two and a half inches tall, and it would be ideal if it was two and a half by by four, two and a half inches tall by four inches wide, and just a couple inches wide, and then it would be a block that I could sit inside of my books as a tool. That's probably the same size as some brick somewhere. I just have to spend some time and go get one. I saw a bookmarker or bookmaker using a brick and they just wrapped it in foil. And I was like, well, that's pretty smart. What do you guys think? So we have a couple of choices here. We can do a multicolor, which I want to steer clear of because we've already introduced a lot of colors with that. That looks, um, I think it looks a little busy. But again, and this is too much green on top of the... Um, the holly. I think the holly will disappear. But again, we want to make it so that it's easy to um, pull this tag out if somebody wants to personalize. So I'm just going to tack down this tip. And then just a slight bit on this side. So I think I'll tack down these two edges. I'm sorry, I think I keep going off uh, out of frame. So I just did the two tips. And if it won't stay in place, you can always tack down that last tip. Okay, and I, I don't know, there's just something about this frame. I keep going back to it, I like it. So it's teeny tiny, but I like it. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have to lay it against a piece of paper, I think, to try to get glue on it, it's so thin. I actually have a die that cuts uh, squares this thin, but they're hard to keep track of. The other thing that's hard about these is it's hard to get it down square because they wanna uh, warp on you but I am going to suffer through it <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> I'm just putting a couple attack points 
I'm not running a bead, that's way too much glue. Let's straighten that out. It's okay if it goes crooked, but I just want it straight for a reference point at the, at the moment. And I kind of like the way I think that it sort of pulls the two um, decorative pieces toward the center. What do y'all think? Comment below. I know what I think. It's not straight. There we go. It's still not perfect, but it's an improvement. Oops. I need another tack point. It dries so fast. This is that um, die cut, so it has that slightly shiny, smooth texture. So when I tapped some of the glue off, I think I just wound up picking it all back up. Okay, I'll give that a minute. If I have some lift spots, I'll come back with some glue. All right, that's the back, guys. So let's swing back around to the front again. I'm pretty darn happy with that. So the last time we were on the front, we added the wishes here. And I've got all the trade full of goodies. So I'd like to add a couple more things to the front. I don't know, so I'm just digging and trying to decide what I want to do. This big black spot just looks like it needs something. I do think I need to go ahead and add this. I'm going to offset it so part of the background shows. I think I'm just going to go ahead and cover up that bird. And I cut this out of the 12 by 12. It's this one. And I uh, cardstock backed it. And I don't think I like it. <laughs> what I think I'm going to do is offset this one like so, and then fussy cut this one out. And I'm going to do a similar thing uh, that I did with um, Let It Be, where I'm going to cut through to the petals and um, round them just to give it more interest. So that's going to take a few minutes. This time when I fussy cut, though, um, instead of trying to cut these pieces off, I think I'm going to include this little bundle and see how it fits. Um, so it's going to be one of those things that I don't know until I actually give it a shot. The other thing we could do is you can fussy cut this from the 12 by 12 collection pack, this pattern, which is a beautiful one. This is the other one I considered for the cover. And over. I don't know where the rest of the sheet is, but it's really beautiful. But you can find, if you can find one of these intact, that's why I was, kind of, oh, here it is. So it goes like so. So you could probably Is this the same size? It is, wow. Mm, is it? Might be a little bit smaller. Yeah, this one's a little bit smaller, and that's smaller yet. So these two are similar. I'm not sure they're, they're perfectly proportioned, but it looks pretty darn close. So you've got a couple of different options for stacking and creating some texture. So, so at the moment, I think I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut this out and then curl the, the tips and see what I think. I can't curl the tips on this because I already put chipboard on the back. So I have to think about that a little bit. I think this is the one I'm going to cut apart. And then I'll preserve these other beautiful pieces to add someplace else. Okay, And then I'll probably cut these stamps out as well. This is, um, it's an okay pattern, but I'm okay 
I don't feel like I need to force this into the book somewhere. I'd much rather have these goodies cut apart. I wish the um, die cuts, there's a lot of tags and beautiful things, but I wish they had more um, flowers in it. They just don't. Um, there's just not enough flowers. Um, there's a lot of tags, which is good. Yeah. I don't know. This would have been good on the back, too. I really like this, but I don't think I like it on the cover. I probably should have stacked this on top of that, and then it would have been framed with a little bit of white. Anyway, something to think about if you guys want to use that instead. I got busy and crazy fussy cutting that, so... Okay, when I come back, we'll finish um, layering some pieces on top of the cover. Okay, everyone. So I, I did a couple of things while I was away. So I dug through all my bits and pieces again. So here's what I decided to do. I'm going to use the fussy cut one that I started with, but I'm going to turn it upside down. This is the second one that I fussy cut. I'm going to lay them on top of each other so you can see what I did. So... When I cut this one out, I cut these large petals off and just discarded them. So I'm going to have this one in upside down. So I've got the large petals coming down this way and then the smaller one on top. And then I've added some texture to the petals of just the top one. <clears throat> and I forgot to ink this while I was away. And so this is going to lay... Let's see, how did I have this? Uh, I think like so. Sl slightly off skew from this one. Okay, so I'm gonna fuss around with it for a second and figure out what I'm doing. I think it's gonna go this way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue this down. This is gonna get, let me ch test it one more time. Maybe I, what I was doing was rotating it this way. <coughs> <coughs> So the stamens are pointing slightly that way, and that's what I'm using as sort of the up position. So that's the other way. And I think I like that. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. So it is actually right side up, and it's gonna to be toward the top, or we're gonna place this leaf toward the bottom of uh, the print. And part of the reason I'm using the large um, poinsettia here is I just feel like there's too much black. It's a little too dark. <clears throat> yep. And I'm going to push this down a little bit because I want to cover that up. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> okay, so before I glue it down, I'm going to ink it. So let's do that real quick. I think I'm ready. I um, always pause the camera because I can piddle around with this for 45 minutes before I'm happy with it. And that's kind of boring to watch, even if I speed through it. These leaves are hard to, hard to get to. But I had intended to have the inking done before I came back. <clears throat> I know, sweetheart. <sighs> kind of got it get creative. So the other thing you can do is lay it down on its face and uh, use a <clears throat> sponge to ink around it. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, now I am going to put some lift in the center, but not on the petal <clears throat> petals.
Okay, this has a single layer of chipboard. I'm adding two layers here. And it's going to rest right here on this petal. I'm just curling, curling these up. I'm going to train them a little bit. And then when I'm, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take the very end and bend it and it's going to get glued in place. So you don't want these just flying around uh, by themselves because they will get torn off. So um, if you're worried about that, do what I do. Just bend it and then glue just the tip down so you still have some volume here. Now if you continue to be concerned about that, that I, what I would say is put the thinnest foam you can behind it and then still shape it the way you want. Um, you can still create a bubble with the foam underneath it. Um, it's not quite as good, but it's not bad. And I would recommend using foam circles because um, that's a more organic shape. If you have squares underneath this, it kind of shows through. I've tried both ways. Okay, so the other thing I usually do, and I'm just off my game lately, is I usually go ahead and coat the whole back of the one that I want to create the texture on with a layer or two of glue to give it a little bit more body and strength. And I failed to do that. I just, like I said, I'm just not on my game. So you may want to consider doing that before you um, apply it to your cover. Um, I may come back and actually add a layer of glue to the top. It depends. Um, we'll see how it goes. For now, I'm, I'm okay with this. So it looks like I missed a spot here, so I'm going to do what I can to, to get it. These white edges just kill me, um, unless it's on a white album, and it's fine. Um, but that's all I see when I look at, look at it. Um, okay, so we need to add a little bit more interest here. So this is a die cut. It's um, got three pieces on it. I'm going to add that there because I feel like it, we need to put some color here to balance. And then um, I've got this cut apart that I was thinking about using over here. Um, and I haven't quite decided yet, but I do know I want these. So let's go ahead and add those. Oops, I did too much glue. And then this one. And I'm going to offset it so it still shows that circle stamp for the postage looking stamp. Okay. Try to take up a little bit of that glue. And then these flourish pieces I really like. So I was going to tuck them in and around the poinsettia itself. And that further emphasizes um, the fact that you have um, layers. <clears throat> so it really helps with the dimension. I think it needs to go that way. Now again, these can be very delicate um, and easy to tear off. So try to anchor it as much as you can. And if you expect that a bunch of kids are going to be looking at this, then I would recommend doing something different, something sturdier. Um, maybe even just using ribbon, although you can catch ribbon, it won't tear off usually. And I'm kind of going back and forth on putting a bow somewhere on here. If I do, I'm not even sure where I'll put it. Maybe perhaps a small bow up here. So the other thing is we could introduce a flourish up here. Nope, I don't like it. I like my two small ones. I don't like the big one. This one kind of disappears, so I'm going to poke it around in a couple of different places until I feel like it sort of pops out.
you know what? I think I'm going to skip these. I think I'm going to figure out something else with like a ribbon or a twine. <clears throat> because I just, after saying that they're easy to tear off, I realized Christmas albums probably get the most wear and tear. Christmas and Christmas baby and wedding. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I'll do something like this. The older I get, the less my fingers want to cooperate. My brain's already tied this 10 times. But my fingers aren't having it, so I just wanted to do a little loop. To see if we stick this stick and stash a couple of loops, if that'll give it some, some interest. And if it does, and I do kind of like it, what I'm going to do is probably come back with an ivory or a gold um, thin uh, ribbon or... Um, sort of waxed cord, which is what this is, and then just tuck it in a couple of spots. So I think it'll uh, most likely be cream or gold. This is too, too ivory for the cover. There is ivory in the collection, but there's, it's on the cover, it's really pretty much white um, and gold. Okay, so that's what we're going to leave you with today on the cover. I'm still considering um, using the larger stamps here. Um, but I'm going to wait until I add my ribbon because I don't want to crowd it. Um, we could do just two instead of four. See, I don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. So the other thing we could do is um, cut the cut these out of the second eight by eight and pop them um, and help them stand out a little bit more. So um, offline, I'll come back and glue my tips down after I've trained my leaves, which may take a little bit more time to get them where I want. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the cover. Um, let me show it to you uh, by the side and you can see where I missed my white edges. Try to get my hands out of the way. And then there's the top down. So this is popped and these are single, double popped. And I think that adds a lot of texture and interest. I also may come back around with Winka Stella and add a little bit of sheen to it. And we have it in our shop. And the Winka Stella I'm using is the, I think it's clear. Does it say? No. Um, but it has the silver flex in it. Um, otherwise, it doesn't have any color. So the um the flex are silver and then the background is clear now I've, I've gotten some of the colored ones before and i think it adds too much color so i prefer the clear and i think the clear comes in gold silver and bronze but i'm not don't quote me um, but they are available in our shop if you want to take a look around see if there's something there you like okay thanks everybody for tuning in this is daphne from scrap and create let me get back on uh, in frame here for you i'll be back soon with uh, more on warm wishes graphic 45 eight at uh, ten and a half by eight and a half by two and a half inch album see you soon hey everyone it's daphne from scrap and create and we're gonna wrap up the cover and install the pages for warm wishes Gra graphic 45's winter collection and i've got my pages in order and then here's what we're going to do on the inside it's very simple. We're just going to do a solid. Why am I so short? 10 and 3 eighths. Hmm. I think I did a quarter inch here. So we're going to, these, these are from the 12 by 12 collection. They've already been inked, so they're ready to lay down. As you can see, I used the um, signature black construction tape. And if you go to my creative spirit,
Claire Chevelle has uh, a couple of videos on how to do this. And then um, Paper Crafting with Paul also has some videos on how to use this black construction tape. I haven't gotten around to making a video. And even though I like it, I'm not quite proficient at it. It's a different uh, different method. It's, it's kind of sticky. And the larger the album, the more challenging it is. <laughs> <clears throat> if you want to try to do the whole thing in one strip, which I do. Okay, normally I have an eight inch border. I decided to go with um, a quarter inch border for this because that's what I did on the cover. And I hope I put that in right side up. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now I'm ready to put my pages in. So here is page one. I have to move a few things because I, because it's so wide, it needs some space. Okay, I'll get my um, hook tool out. Page one. And I need to set these aside so I can lay it flat. Okay, I can see there's a little bit of chipboard peeking out and I'm gonna cover that in a minute with some um, Sharpie. I'm surprised I hadn't noticed that sooner. Go. page two one of my favorite pages Okay, I'm, I'm checking to make sure that these are lining up on both sides. <clears throat> Here's my layout page, which I very, very rarely do. Wow, I do. I have quite a bit showing. How did I miss this? I don't know. But it's a pretty easy problem to solve. Although I wish they made um, sharpie so that it wasn't shiny. It always has a little bit of a shine to it. But so does the tape, so. Okay, problem solved. Okay, this is page five, four or five. I could feel it was going to tear. Still tore. Another little piece. The neck of this gets stuck on the next hinge. It's really irritating. As you can see. And then when I go to pull, it's like, wait a minute, or push. It's just one more thing I'm dealing with. It's 
hard enough to see what I'm doing. Okay. He's pushing on it to try to keep it in the right place. I don't know if I did. I'm going to use my hook tool to press my hinge down. One side is, this side's always easier because I'm not running into a hinge. <clears throat> I think this is pretty. I think this turned out nice. Very simple, but I like it. <clears throat> All right. Look at that. All right, everyone. That's it for the cover and um, the page installs. You know what? This is wider than I was expecting. I think it looks okay, but you could easily put two strips of designer paper there. I mean, we have this gusset between each of the pages. I don't know why I cut this so short. Um, I kind of surprised myself. I thought I did 10 and uh, 3 eighths and the pages, oh, that's why. My page is 11 inches. So if you do 10 and a half by, like you're supposed to, if you do 10 and a half by eight and a half, you're not gonna have this gap. <laughs> I made my page a half inch, half inch longer than it's supposed to be. That's why it looks like this. Also, your cover will look, look a little more balanced because this pattern will come over a half inch about this far. So you'll have a little, you'll have a half inch less of this. So isn't that interesting? I don't know why I didn't check that <laughs> or why I skipped that process, but I think yours will look a little more balanced. Mine is 11 by eight and a half and it should be ten and a half by eight and a half and the instructions uh in the playlist will be for ten and a half by eight and a half by two and a half thanks everybody for tuning in this is daphne from scrap and create the next time we get together i'll do the walkthrough and release all the videos see you soon